Are you heating your pans correctly? Well, chances are you're not. We know that heat is necessary for cooking, but many people have no idea what level of heat they actually need to use to get restaurant quality meals at home. The most common mistake people make with heat is using too little of it. If you're someone who opts for cooler and longer versus hotter and faster when it comes to heating your pans, I'm gonna teach you the benefits of high heat and some of the techniques you should start adopting today. Most restaurant kitchens have thick, fatty stoves that burn with much larger flames than what we've got at home. The low end temp of a restaurant stove may be close to a medium in your kitchen. This means that when a cook in a restaurant sets their pan on the burner, it gets up to cooking temperature really Really, really rapidly. Now we can't quite mimic that and I'm not proposing you outfit your kitchen with a commercial stove. What I am going to tell you is that you need to stop letting your pans sit over medium heat for five minutes to get them up to temp. We can expedite the heating process by simply letting go of our fear of high heat in the kitchen. This isn't just about saving time though. Properly heating your pan leads to even browning, less sticking, and better cooked final dishes. Let's do a quick comparison to see how long it takes to get my carbon steel up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's around the temperature you want for sauteing. I'll set my flame to a little below medium, which is where many home cooks start. While that heats up, I've got my stopwatch running and I've got an infrared thermometer, which makes me feel very much like Alton Brown. Getting this pan up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit directly from room temperature took me just below five minutes or so. Taking it low and slow doesn't even really heat the pan more evenly, so it may not even be worth it. I've reset the pan and it's back to room temperature. So let's see how long it takes over high heat. In this context, when I say high heat, it's a little bit less than the high on the actual knob, maybe like 80 to 70% of a full flame. This took just around two minutes to fully heat up, which is around three minutes difference in time. This means you don't have to set a pan over heat while you do other stuff or wait around for it to get hot. You can simply prep everything you needed and then get the pan up to temp in a few minutes. The medium low one was sort of riding the line between 350 degrees Fahrenheit and less than that in some parts of the pan. Again, uneven browning, uneven heating, not good for what we want. One thing to look out for if you do start using high heat is the size of your burner versus the size of your pan. Make sure you match up your pan size to the correct burner size. You don't want the flame itself licking over the edge of the pan or onto the handle. You want it to mostly be hitting the bottom of the pan. I've covered how to avoid sticking in pans in a previous video, but the short of it is that you need a pan to be the right level of hot for food not to stick to it. If you're constantly keeping your pans over medium low, chances are much higher that it won't be up to temperature when you put your food in. This leads to more sticking and way more frustration. Also, if your pans are sitting over medium low, the chances are that you'll never see the nice browning you get from restaurant food. So high heat is great for getting your pan up to temperature, but that doesn't mean you have to keep it there when you get something into the pan. If you're cooking a delicate thing like a filet of salmon, simply get your pan up to temp and then turn it down once the salmon is in the pan. You control the stove. The stove doesn't control you. For other items like a steak, you'll probably want to keep it over high for that beautiful crust everybody loves. If you get your pan hot and then turn down the flame to where you want it to be, you'll be golden. Now, if you start adopting this high heat methodology, there's a few things to be aware of. There's a motto in kitchens that every handle is hot. This just means don't grab any pan with a bare hand because you can safely assume it's hot. If you start cooking over high heat more often, you're going to need to adopt this motto in your kitchen. Keep a dry towel or pot holder around to start grabbing your handles with. You also can't really do this if you're someone who is half paying attention while cooking, but maybe there's a lesson there. One of my recent videos is about why we cook, and one of the reasons for cooking I shared is that it's fun to do something with your hands. This is a great opportunity to be present with your food while you cook. You can't really do this well while trying to multitask, and as someone who constantly has multiple screens running to tune out the anxiety, it can be really nice to focus on one thing. Now this isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. There are certain caveats to be aware of. Teflon or nonstick pans usually have a recommended temperature that they need to stay below or they run the risk of releasing some potentially harmful chemicals. Save the high heat cooking for your cast irons, your stainless steels, and your carbon steels. I understand that not everybody has the option to cook distraction free. Kids, pets, and any loved ones present could run the risk of grabbing a potentially hot handle. You'll have to weigh these options for yourself, but I recommend adopting higher heat if you're able to. Save yourself time, get better browning, and keep your food from sticking. You can easily level up your at-home cooking by adopting professional techniques like this. Hopefully you found this video helpful, but if you need more context around cooking in general, be sure to check out this deep dive into the question of why we cook. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here, and a massive thank you to all the people supporting me on Patreon. Love you guys and cheers.